TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live. But by the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Dang, I didn't drop something. Um, right behind me, you see it. Warning. You know what I'm saying? These are to all viewers that are not, you know what I'm saying? Or are sensitive to, you know what I'm saying? Things. Uh, YouTube. Check me out. I'm trying to do better. The lit one, oh, you see it on the bottom of the screen, man. Twitch.com, man. That's the username. Lock in with us for the lives, man. Lock in with us for the lives, man. Uh, don't forget, we do got merch and we got um, Patreon. Everything is down in the description. I'm two shots in. I'm two shots in, so bear with me, everybody. Can't pay, we'll take it away. Season 4, episode 19. Talk to me. Copyright, copyright disclaimer under section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. In the UK, there are currently over 8 million adults who are struggling with debt. The Citizens Advice Bureau in England and Wales dealt with... This show will make you feel real about, bad about being a struggling adult. ...just <laughs> under 4,000 new debt problems every day during the first quarter of 2016. Gareth Short and Craig Vernal are High Court enforcement agents. They travel. Is this the rookie tandem again? Okay, here we go. Let's see them get ate up by somebody. Hundreds of miles every week, collecting debts and seizing goods. Their first job of the day is in Telford, Shropshire, to enforce a judgment for a debt of almost three thousand pounds owed by a roofing business to a loan company. Where are we going today then, Gar? So, first call this morning on the way to Telford. Debtor is A1 Roofing Services. How much do they owe? £2,765. If the defendant named on the writ, A. Tranter, can't or won't pay today, the agents can remove goods. Take it away. The agents will take it away. And vehicles to offset the debt. They're working on the roof right now, ain't they? Bro, they be pulling up with zero confidence. Look how far back he is from his partner. They're not even together in this. Hello, looking for a tranter, please. Who's that? Sorry? Hey, court enforcement agents, we are. I've got an a tranter here. Trantor? Yep. No, Trantor. Looking for A1 Roofing Services. No. No? I've spoke to you on the phone. And he said, hey, court enforcement. I spoke to a woman on the phone and okay. I said, never heard of this. I've had letters which I've returned. Okay. Because there's no one at this address. Mm -hmm. Shout out, Jasper. Do you have any proof of you like this, this address? How can I prove that someone's not at this address? Council tax bill, tenancy agreement, mortgage statement. Wait, there a second. I'm yeah. just having my kitchen redone, so... Yeah. Oh. But Gareth's paperwork suggests that Mr. Tranter does live at this address. They need to investigate further. So you don't know this gentleman at all, do you? Shout out the way word. Good. 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 L.A. Trantor. Tranter. Okay. I'm Tranter. This is what I was saying to okay. you. I'm guessing it's a spelling mistake. At the moment, they got reason to believe that A. Tranter lives at this property. And he... Hey, no, no. Whoa, if it's a spelling mistake, that ain't me. Come back with the correct paperwork. Because I'm not Trentor, I'm Trenter. 
That's two different people. I don't, if any credit company called me talking about, can I speak to? If my name is spelled wrong, that's not me. And in the court of law, they will sell you. That is not me, <laughs> or that that is not that gentleman. My ID, my birth certificate, do not say that. That is not me, buddy. Well, as soon as it lives at this property, probably the best way to, to get us off your doorstep now is just to let us into this property, have a quick look around. If we got reason to believe he's not here, then we'll he'll leave. I don't so, even know a name. Tranter, my husband is called Kay. Okay. Kenny. Does he, own a does he own a company called A1 Roofing no. Services? He never has, does he? No. Is he, is he has been inside the property at the moment. Yeah, do you want me to go and get him? Yeah, if you could please. Ask him to bring some ID down with him as well. With the door open, Gareth and Craig take the opportunity to get inside the property. They must speak to the woman's husband to confirm whether he is the man named on the writ or whether this is a case of mis- Brian, Dill, Paul, they would have all stepped all the way into the kitchen if that door was open. They rookie self step right here. Taken identity. Hello, Hello sir. All right. Hey. That's a little dark in it. What time is it? Yeah. Hey, court enforcement agents we are. Right. We're looking for a tranter. A1 Roofing Services. No, that says no, Tranter. Kind of, kind of trans, that's me. Okay. I'm kind of trans. Are you anything at all associated to A1 Roofing Services? No. This, I can't believe this. This isn't even our Philippine debts. All we need to do is confirm that A1 Roofing's not here and we'll leave you in peace. No, I'm happy. Confirm it. The so, easiest way for us to do that is to have a little look around with. No, I'm that's not happy with that. That's the easiest way. Just bear I'm with me. I'm happy with that. The man claims he has a different first name and spells his surname differently. But when he returns carrying documents, he locks Craig out, leaving Gareth inside. Uh, what did they be calling this? Entrapment? What is this? Can you open that door for my colleague, please, sir? Yeah, no, so I'm sure it's my night. Just step back in there, sir. No, 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 I'll open that door to my colleague. <laughs> No, no, you won't. No, no, no. This is a classic kidnapping. Oh, fucking big baby, man. Just fucking get in there, will you? If you, if you want to <laughs> kick off it, if you want to kick off it, I'll just look on the property. Not a problem, mate. For fuck's sake, man. Not a problem. Despite the man's growing agitation, the agents can't leave until they're satisfied he's telling the truth. That is who I am. Kenneth Tranter. Kenneth. Not A. But Gareth spots his middle name written on one of the documents. Mm. You tried to sneak your middle name and spell it wrong. You knew what you was doing from the jump. Kind of. You might be getting jailed for uh, 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 scamming. The Andrew T Tranter. Yeah, okay. that's who I am. The man confirms his middle name is Andrew, but Gareth suspects he could be using it as his first name. I got a reason to believe A Tranter is you, sir. I'm Kenneth Tranter. Kenneth Andrew Tranter, A Tranter. No, no, I'm Kenneth Tranter. That's who I am. I'll just show you that, OK? Yeah. At the moment, I've got reason to believe, sir, you're the debtor and you're the person we're looking for. I cannot get a loan. I am not allowed to get a loan. OK. So if you've got a document with a loan signature on it, if you show me, I can prove it to you. OK, with the greatest respect, how would you know, if you're not A Tranter, how would you know why we're here? Salute to Jasper to the follow. Mr. Tranter's apparent knowledge that the debt is connected to a loan make that's smart thinking, rookie. Okay, little rook. Who's this? Gareth even more suspicious. Mr. Tranter, okay, I'll explain to you because I got a reason to believe you're you're the person we're looking for. I haven't got a debt. We we're here with a high court writ. I haven't got a debt. Okay, okay, whether you whether okay. you acknowledge it or not, okay. Sir, okay, I got a reason to believe it's you. My name is Kenneth Tranter. Andrew Tranter. Kenneth Andrew. I am called Kenneth. I cannot sign nothing A Tranter. I'm not allowed to. But why, why is that, sir? Because I'm called Kenneth. That's my legal name. You're having a writ against your aunt. So, okay. Right? okay. Because with great respect, with great, somebody great respect, you, just called him, you just called him Andrew. No, I said you're having. I didn't say Andrew. Okay. And. You did. You did. Hold on, let's rewind it because we can replay. I'm having a writ against why, why, why is that, sir? Because I'm called Kenneth. That's my legal name. You're having a writ against your aunt. Uh, they got the subtitles on the screen too. Called, Kenneth. That's my legal name. You're having a. You go by Andrew, clearly. 
Brit against Durant. Uh, so, okay. Right? okay. Because with great respect, with great, somebody great respect, you just thinks, call him. You just call him Andrew. No, I said you're having. I didn't say Andrew. Did. And yeah, and Andrew, you went to call him before. You you slipped up there. Really. <laughs> really, 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 really and and really, do you agree with me? Oh, when and no, no, that ain't what you did. We okay. had we seen the replay. We seen the context. We seen the delivery. We we the feel of it was and Drew. Whatever. I'm not even going to go into it. You're on drugs, man. Oh, no, that's ridiculous. With yet more clues indicating that the man is known as Andrew, Gareth puts the pressure on. He wants to flush out his true identity once and for all. And whenever you're talking to me, I'm taking everything in. And as soon as I see that one little glitch, I'll jump all over that. So you make sure you. He looked like uh, Jason Stat Tatham. Statham? What's his new? What's dude name? You'll keep your story straight, because if you're telling the truth, it'll always stay the same. You can hide from this as much as you want. I'm not hiding anywhere, mate. I fucking work at the dick. You can't say what I'm doing. Right, you're obviously not acknowledging this, mate. At the moment, I'm not. You got the same haircut as him. I don't do anything, so I don't same know. Nose. With tempers rising. Will Gareth and Craig be able to get to the bottom of this complicated case and find out who the man really is? Chaving and A.O.'s as the agents suspected the man was the defendant. Now Gareth and Craig need to try and get to the bottom of this mystery. If I said to you now, open up the back of the van and we have a look in there, if you had nothing to hide, someone would just do that. Do you want yeah? to the van for you? Yeah, if you don't mind, that would be great because... <laughs> uh, if I, the van is full of shit, mate. Yeah. So all we say, mate, is just cooperate with us a little bit and we can get our job done, we can get out of here. There's all Let's see all of this roofing equipment that you got in the back of that van, sir. All sorts in there. Yeah, get me, brother. Yeah, yeah. OK. What's the invoice book on the dashboard? Turn a quick look, mate. Have you on, Craig discovers an invoice made out to Andy Tranter. Come on, mate. You use the name Andy, don't you? No, mate, I'm caught a lot Your of name might be Kenneth, but your name's Andy. You, you use your Andy, mate. Day to day, you use Andy. I've seen enough. Sorry, mate, but I've seen enough of it. The eight... <laughs> <laughs> to be caught red-handed is crazy. How many people have ever been Jintel caught red-handed on this, like... I ain't. I don't think I ever been caught red-handed doing anything that I wasn't supposed to do, or or in a lot or anything like that. Because honestly, I'm a truth teller. I'm a truth seeker. I ain't never lied. They have enough proof that the man calls himself Andy and that he is the A Tranter named on the writ. The invoice book in the van is uh, Andy Tranter. I've got, got an invoice in there with one name on the van, Andy Tranter. I did that fucking years ago. Yeah. Oh, man. Using emotions just... She's like, oh, my love, you got us caught. It's oh, over. the job. Once that's out of the way, that's when you start coming back down to the debtors, de debtors level, having a decent chat with them just to get the result you want. Despite all the evidence to the contrary, Mr. Tranter is still standing his ground, but he can't provide proof that there's been a mistake made. His wife starts to cooperate with the agents. Let's sort this. Well, what do we do? I don't know. There's a couple of different options for you, sir. There's going to be a conclusion to this case today while we're here. You can either offer a payment, or we're going to look to seize and move assets from you. So at the moment, we're at stage one, which is the lowest value it can be. There's no way I can pay that, mate. There's no way in the world. Okay. I haven't got that sort of money. With Mr. Tranter saying he can't pay, the agents have the right... ..to take it away. ..to seize goods to offset the debt. You've had your opportunity to pay it. It'll now get progressed to stage two. Um, we'll now start to make an, an inventory of everything. With payments looking unlikely, Gareth and Craig turn up the pressure. They got some nice little leather couches. I see some flat screens. There was vehicles. There was multiple vehicles in the drive. And start listing the goods in the house. And I got the TV, soundbar, 
Xbox, dining table and chairs, the van. So we've got another Samsung TV. But the value of the goods in the house and the van outside won't clear the almost £3,000 debt. A whole van? That is a whole van? Bro, what a time to be alive in 2016 where you could get those type of vans for under this, this whole debt amount. Like, you can't do that anymore. I don't care if the van is 10 years old. If it look decent, it's not going for less than three in 2024. No way. At least in America, well, they is not having that type of energy. And with the other vehicles apparently on finance, Craig gives him one last chance to pay off some of the money. Can you get 50% of the debt? Nah. Can you get 1,500 quid? What about if I could get a grand? And, that, and that's pushing, that's if I can. Just gonna pop to the van, get a card machine. <laughs> Mr. Tranter's offer of 1,000 pounds confirms Gareth's belief that they have got the right man after all. We're better off taking the thousand pound and putting a monthly arrangement instead of removing goods and probably getting a 200 pound maximum at the auction in which they wouldn't pay anything then going forward. So at least we've got a guaranteed revenue then for, for the client. Fingers crossed within five minutes we'll take a payment and we'll be out and on our way. Looking to make a thousand pound on that card there, is it? I take the card off you, please. Thanks. Going forward, we're looking at about four hundred pound a month payment. Mr. Trenter has agreed. Four hundred is insane. If I know anything about Mr. Trenter, he's definitely not going to pay that. I don't believe it. The only reason that he would pay it is his wife wants to be done with the debt. You know what I'm saying? But other than that, I don't think so. To a payment plan to clear the rest of the debt. Okay, sir. That's your copy. Keep all of that. Keep it safe. Hopefully, you won't see us again, sir. Have you got my email address? I take whatever contact details you've got, if I can take from you, sir. Yeah. <coughs> it is uh, A. Tranter. Yeah. Thank you, sir. At what? I was going to email, bro. Like, that was a real slick move you tried to pull right there on, uh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> We've asked him for some contact details for him. The email address he's given us is A. Tranter. Mr. Tranter must now stick to his payment plan. Otherwise, the agents will be back. That's a great result. I can't believe it when you give the email address. A. A. Tranter. So you're right, Jasper. You're not lying. I need to figure out how to whatever. I need to figure out more things to do on here. My foot. Government figures released in 2016 reveal that the number of homeless families with children in temporary accommodation has seen a 50% increase since 2010. Last year, nearly 40,000 families were accepted as homeless by their local council. Nearly 70% of homeless households in the first quarter of 2016 were families with dependent children. Three PM, Ealing, West London. It's a nice day. Yeah, lovely day today. Nice change. High yeah, Court enforcement dude. agents Steve Pinner and Phil Short are on their way to carry out. Have we seen Phil Short before? I think we have. It's an eviction. So it could be a sublet. It could or be. Or they could be the original tenants. Yeah. It could be any number of things. The tenants owe almost £10,000 in unpaid rent. But the agents aren't here to collect the money. Their job is to get the tenants out today. Uh, what is this, a ground floor flat? Toll house? No, it's just a shop. It's what? Looks like a shop. This is 108. The address listed on the writ is a commercial property and not a residential address as the agents were expecting. It's got to be the shop. So upstairs. Just clarify this. God forbid I break into somewhere that I shouldn't. 
Steve calls the office to double check. Sorry to trouble you, John. Just to clarify, this one in South Ealing is a shop. It's all closed up and locked, but yeah, it's a shop. Hello, sir. Hi. We've been waiting for you around the back. Oh, okay. The There's landlord's the agent arrives, and he has some surprising news for Steve and Phil. What is it? It's the back of the shop, is what it is. We have okay. illegal tenants in the back. They turn it into a flat. Oh, really? Yeah. So what, like squatters? It's like a squatting situation? Like a... Are these some middies in here? What's going on? <laughs> It's clear that somebody has already started removing their possessions. People in the shop have gone. It's the people in the shop who actually left these people here. Okay. So the people are being evicted are the back. It appears that the shopkeeper has sublet the back room to a family unlawfully. Where are they? Hello? Hello. Hi. You know why we're here? It's like the job, almost done. One of the subtenants, Mrs. Stevan, is at home with her baby. This is a high court writ, okay. giving us possession of this property. So you have to leave. You get an hour to get your personal effects, identification, any medication, clothes for a few days, and then you can take this down to the council. Possibly they'll help you. Okay. Uh, and then you can make an arrangement with the landlord to come back and collect the rest of your stuff. OK? okay? So, I don't believe that she's understanding the words that are coming out of your mouth right now. You might have to get like something else done. Do you need people to call and help? Yeah. Okay, if you call them, ask them to get here very quickly. Okay. So we can do this. Okay. Excuse me, I just need to go through. While Mrs. Stevan calls for help, Phil and Steve check if anyone else is living in the premises. Midland Bank. What year? Does any date on it? It's old. Well, I know that because Midland Bank's have been out of business twenty years. Is it? Yeah. It's HSBC. It becomes clear Mr. and Mrs. Stevan and their young baby have been living in a former high street bank. This is quite impressive. Oh, this. Wow. Complete with money vault and bulletproof door. I'm not gonna lie, that's pretty cool though. That's lit. Is that what you call a panic room? Oh, yeah. It's quite a solid section. There. The property market in London is so expensive, we are coming across people living in backs of shops, uh, garages that have been converted, garden sheds that have been converted, just so they've actually got somewhere to sleep and live. Mrs. Stevan claims she was unaware that there were any problems with her tenancy. <clears throat> Me, Tandy, was good. Don't forget to follow. Appreciate you. We, we always pay the rent, the um, shopkeeper. We always pay. Uh, we don't know the shopkeeper with the landlord problem. You know that? Uh, you were there I think illegally. That the shopkeeper, uh, not pay the rent, rent or something uh, with landlord. As Mr. Stevan was in a low-paid job, this unconventional home was the only place the family could afford to rent. Every day I go to the estate agency. They see the pay slip, the bank statement. They say, you don't have lots of money. You only, only want your husband working. Many worries with my child, husband in the work. What can I do? Well, guess what? You can take this piece of paper to the council and they will get you emergency accommodation until they find something more permanent for you. <laughs> That's exactly what's about to happen. A neighbor arrives to lend a hand. Please go in one more thing here, I can help her. You can help, you can take all of this. No, 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 I'm from inside the outside, yeah? Yes. Need help, please. 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 Need help,
but he can't offer them a bed for the night. It's a whole crib back here. Like, what? Who was they supposed to lend this to? It, was it not supposed to be a crib? Like, there's literally a kitchen, living room, dining room, bedrooms, like. Or was the, the, t the guy supposed to use it for himself and not lend it? Run it out. Like, I would have definitely rented this out. I don't know. I can't help them. This is not easy. You're a family. You're a single person, I can. But this is the family. It's difficult. <laughs> Couldn't even really get comfortable. The problem is when people rent sometimes off the internet or wherever they find the, these landlords, nine times out of ten, the, the landlord isn't the landlord. He's a tenant. So he's subletting to people to make Sublet. money off of them and possibly not paying the landlord. Well, the air entire everything back there. Yeah. The eviction is nearly complete. Mrs. Stevan's husband has rushed home from work. There's no information, anything. Okay, you have to move today. My wife will now working at the moment. My wife told me it's a problem coming out. I don't know idea. I don't know where you want to go now. It's 4.30 p.m. The family are now homeless. Mrs. Stevan must leave quickly to get to the council's offices to apply for emergency accommodation before they close. What you gonna do with all of this, though? Where is this going? You know what I'm saying? Where's the van? Where's the U-Haul? Or well, whatever y'all call it out there, the company that moved, that you can rent a van from. Uh, where, where's the storage unit? Where this going? Uh, he, they look after the things. Huh. Close the five o'clock, the house. Mm. The family's only hope is that they're granted emergency housing for the night. It's a shop. It's not a habitable place to live, especially with small children. I'm not gonna lie to you, man. It was very habitable. <laughs> it looked like a whole apartment back there. It was good. So hopefully, from here on, they'll find somewhere a bit better. Phil and Steve have dealt with a sensitive situation. But in Gareth and Craig's next case... If payment is not made... Ah. Personal debt in the UK is rising. Recent figures show that people owed almost £1.5 trillion pounds in 2016. The average total debt per household including mortgages, is almost £55,000. One in six adults in the UK is struggling with debt. Might be higher now, right? It's 7am, and High Court enforcement agents Gareth Short and Craig Vernal are back on the road. This time in Carmarthenshire, Wales. They're chasing a debt of over £5,000 owed by Kerry Phillips. Mm. $5,000. Okay, now we're getting into the big league, okay? I want to see if y'all got your big boy britches on. We are off to a farm. Going to see a Kerry Phillips in Tree Forest. How much is it not shell? It is currently £5,652.40. The debt is for an unpaid vet's bill. Hello. Yeah, I better be careful now. Two of y'all pulling up to a farm in a white van. It's giving. Don't forget, though, it's, they, they can, the farmers can legally tote that iron. 
They got that fire for you. What else? Should I look past me? Spotting two cars parked outside the house, the agents block them in. If they belong to the debtor, Kerry Phillips, they could be seized if she can't or won't pay today. What do they got, the morning shift? Every time I see these two, it's the morning shift. Look at the crack of dawn. I hear birds chirping. Two dogs. Movement upstairs. Hey there. Looking for Kerry Phillips, please. Speaking. High Court Enforcement Agents. This is to do with a High Court writ that's issued against you. At this time in the morning? Yeah, yeah, unfortunately. It's the time they come, Miss Phillips. These two, at least. Okay, I'll hold up. Uh, well, she's closed the door on us, but I can hear her shout into someone else inside the address. So hopefully, uh, somebody else will come back out, or she'll come back out in a moment. But then a man appears at the door, wanting to know what the debt is about. Morning. Hey, man, I need to speak with Kerry, just to ascertain that she's happy for me to discuss it with yourself. As long as she's well, happy to do it. Not this time in the morning, no, because okay. we haven't had any notification about it. Okay, well, we've got a high court writ that we're going to be enforcing here this morning. Unless I can speak to Kerry, I'm not going to discuss it with you, unfortunately. All right? If not, we'll enforce the writ now, sir. Whenever a debtor has a partner there, sometimes it does actually work for them, where they can bounce off each other and come up with a resolution. But... It can also do the opposite. It gets a lot more emotional and it makes the situation a lot more difficult. And that's exactly After what Buddy came out to do. The 10 minutes. Kerry came out ready to deal with this dude. It's waiting outside. It seems that the couple don't want to cooperate. So Gareth and Craig decide to take a look around the farm for other assets they could seize to offset the debt. Job at JCB. Yeah. Ah, oh, clean boots last night as well. All part of the job, mate. <laughs> Key, yeah. Careful now. Oh, we got a quad bike as well, mate. Make that two. Now remember, remember, man. The farm is like gold. They always, all, they're always gonna find something at the farm to offset the debt. So go ahead and play if you want to. We're going to go ahead and run these little VIN numbers. And you're going to come out if you want to come out. But when you see this transportation vehicle, don't get all chirpy and and, and, and play ball now. It's too late. We're here. <laughs> Two quad bikes, guy. I got the key to the tractor as well. Okay. Where you get the key Never from? Had, uh, that machinery like this would be worth because of its age. If, uh, if this machinery was a lot newer, it would certainly be worth uh, removing. Uh, Bro, it doesn't, even, who, it doesn't even matter. It's still worth some money. Um, but we'll, uh, we'll work that out throughout the day and uh, see where we go. The agents hope that the threat of removing the farm equipment will prompt Kerry to pay. Miss Phillips, you're going to engage with us now. Are you, are you going to speak to us? Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant. Checks I've written to her, all right? So I'm writing more down, so if you wait. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. They're not here to decipher if you paid or not. They're here to collect the debt. The, we're past that. We want money. Has anything come off the balance at all? She's saying she's written checks. Payments received since judgment or order? Zero. Somebody, somebody's payment. Kerry claims that after losing a county court judgment, she's been paying off her debt in instalments. But the agents have a high court writ to enforce. All right. All right, mate. She said it's okay for you to talk to me about it. How much is it all with me? Okay, so we're looking to recover 5,652 pounds and 40 pence. She owes her 200 quid. Okay, okay. So she's going through the checks. Okay. Now, to prove it. <laughs> 
That wouldn't be sufficient for us. Maybe we're here with a high court writ at the moment. So Why haven't we been warned about this? You, you have been warned. Sufficient, yeah. sufficient documentation be sent to this address. Yeah, not. Gareth and Craig need to get inside the... That's always the excuse. No, it's not. So where did they go then? You saying the, the, the British Postal Service is not doing their job? Property to verify that Kerry has been paying off her debt, as she claims. Well, look, Kate, don't hey, let him going, do that door. I'll go on this way, mate. It doesn't bother me either way. <laughs> oh, it's all right. He's in. Bring the police in or someone. All right, let me in. Look at that. The shotguns are coming up. No, he's threatening guns, mate. Please just bear with me, all right? If you was as organised with your checkbooks as you was with your bank statements, you'd pull your bank statements out now and show us. That's not unreasonable. A, a cheque coming out of your bank would be on your statement. But if I could go in there now and prove it... If everything's all, all electronic... Then only go back three months. Well, have you paid anything in the last three months? Yeah, yeah in January. Be, well, January's yeah, well, well, that's a start. Let's have a look at that. <laughs> Trying to torture anything, mate, to help you. Kerry's partner searches their online bank statements to prove that they've been paying money to the claimant. You can see we have been making the payments. The, pro the problem we've got is we can see that you've been making check payments of £200, but who to? We don't know, do we? Well, it's bullshit, isn't it? I'm not lying to you, boys. We just need to know what this £200 you were paying is for. Because it could be for rent or use of the land or anything like that, do you get me? Yeah. Whenever you walk inside a property, we're constantly scanning for information. We're constantly reading that person, what, what they're saying. Is there any little chinks in their arm that they're lying about? So we're constantly looking for that one little thing that we can bite onto. You haven't looked on any one of these checks, and when it says cunt, <laughs> that's her. <laughs> well, you should have put her real name, because then they would have known for sure. You being funny got you in this situation. Well, hey, good husband or boyfriend. Because the payments are not going to her, they're going to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The check stubs show that Kerry has been making payments to the claimant. Craig calls the office to try to get to the heart of the matter. Oh, Craig, you're a nice job. What's the story here, mate? There's some evidence here to show that they've been making check payments sent to the client. Now, they've got it on the bank statements. Um, we've got nothing on the writ to say that any payments have been made. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll try and contact the client now and uh, call it back in two months, mate. Brilliant. Thanks, John. Cheers. They would send the more rookies on a blank mission. Ain't nothing, out, ain't nothing out of the ordinary going on, and they didn't send them out here. Jimmy, buddy. While the agents wait for the office to call back, Craig wants to know more about the case. Where does this, uh, where does this dare come from? Her dog. Her dog bit our dog. It's all about the dog then, is it? She came up here and had a dog looks on the yard. Her dog went through and they had a massive fight. And her dog caught his leg in the drain down there and broke his leg. So she took me to court and I lost. So, But I have not... And obviously this... Well, this um, on my payments, honest to God. I oh, no, obviously this debt then is for the, the cost it's of like the, the vet's bill and everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hello. Yep, no problems, mate. Keep it with me. Two seconds. The office calls back with some news. I've entered in the... Uh, I've put a credit on the system for the back payments made. The balance is £2,033.52. Yeah. Thanks very much, John. Cheers, Craig. Cheers, mate. Bye-bye. It... Oh, OK. So she's paid off more than half of the debt, but she took it to the high court to get it immediately, right? Is that what's going on, or...? It seems that Kerry has been making substantial payments, but the claimant failed to notify the office. But she owes far more than the £200 she thinks is outstanding. What's the verdict? With the costs and the balance that's currently outstanding, it's now £2,033.52. Oh, pounds and 52 pence. All right, so that's where we're at with it now. He went with me back down to cash bank transfer. Card. It's normally a, an instant thing. so much, I can't believe that twat. Whenever. Yeah, I ain't even gonna lie. Like, I, I, don't, I, I was talking crazy, but she been making payments, good payments. 
And now just more and more, huh? Somebody starts going into detail and you can see it as heartfelt and emotional. That's when With these payments, is it interest on it too? You see that they are being genuine. You can see it has actually hurt them going through this, um, this circumstance. And when you start to sympathize with them, they can see that. And that's when you're both on the same level and you both get a better conclusion out of it. The agents have been at the farm for over two hours. Kerry's partner decides to pay off the balance in full. Good in. Job done. He's going to write you out a handwritten receipt now as well, so you've got both of them. Yeah. All right, then. Thanks for being decent, both. Oh, you're welcome. All right. Next call is as nice as ours. Uh, what do you think? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Take it easy. You open the van, so I can... All in all, that was pretty smooth. Put this uh, file in it. Not gonna even lie. The client's been waiting for their money since early 2014, his number of years. And um, uh, we've got the matter concluded today. I think it's, uh, for the client's point of view, it's a great result. And, um, yeah, we're happy. I hope her partner getting getting some action today. 2500 Swipe on a car like it was nothing? Yeah. Hey, now. You don't want to hear it, ma'am. Please. <laughs> Bless me. With your loving. Right there. As business rates rise, a leading retail association reported this year that more than one in four UK shops could close by 2025. Right, all of these positive outcomes. Let's get some negativity. Come on now. The situation is particularly acute in London, where commercial rents have risen by 180% in the past five years. Mm. Forty thousand shops in the UK have shut down in the past ten years. High Court enforcement agents Paul Bowhill and Steve Pinner are in North London. <laughs> the undefeated tandem, the originals. What they got? They got a new whip. What is this they in? Chasing thirty thousand pounds worth of commercial rent arrears owed by shopkeeper Jerry Cantor. 30 bands, it's crazy. It's uh, a dry cleaners with the tailors inside it. He does have a 10 year lease, but that runs out in Turn June this year. So he might I be don't on the know what slam. the possibilities are of collecting it because he might just be thinking, well, I'll run the end of my lease and then toddle off into the sunshine. You got that right. 30,000, listen, I'm, we're almost done here. Let me just, you know. <laughs> Mr. Cantor has not paid full rent for three years, and now his landlord wants his money back. On their way in, Paul and Steve spot a Mercedes Benz parked right by the shop. If it belongs to Mr. Mr. Cantor, it could be removed if he can't or won't pay. Hello, sir. My name is Paul Bowhill. What can we do? Oh, yeah. Okay. This looks promising. The last two, three episodes, it took the older crowd to get it cracking. Maybe this will do it. There's some rent outstanding for here. Sit down because. Um, no, that's I'm disabled right. nowadays, I'm afraid. Oh, yes, what can we do? For you? Right. There's 30 odd thousand pounds. Yeah, we'll be we having mm. Right. If the rent is not paid or a suitable arrangement come to, the landlord could be pursuing you to bankruptcy. It wouldn't bother me, to be wouldn't perfectly it? honest with you, no. It wouldn't bother me. I'm, I, I, I live, let's put it this way, Paul, I'm an honourable guy. I'm paying as much as I possibly can out of the business. You tell me what we can suggest, because it's, it's, it's very, very difficult for me. Yeah. I'm now 80. Right. Uh, Mr. Cantor has... Anybody that throw their age out there and that's a big number, what they're really saying is, listen, I'm almost at the end of my rope. I don't give a damn what y'all got going on. 
You figure it out. Mm -hmm. Made his position clear. But Paul and Steve are duty bound to get this £30,000 debt paid in either cash or goods today. The reality is, if we don't collect the rent, yeah. we could seize the goods here. One of the items that we could seize is the Mercedes, which is parked outside. Yeah, you keep up for Do you say you're not concerned about being made bankrupt? No. I think if I'm dealing with older people, it is a generation thing, so people are more likely to uh, assume, quite rightly, that I've got a sympathetic view. The reality of the situation is that no matter how sympathetic I might be, we will still try to achieve the best result for the client. We will never ever prejudice the client's interests in favour of any other thing. With payment... Well spoken. ...and looking unlikely, Paul goes... Spoken like a true uh, debt collector. ...was outside to update the office. We need to speak to the landlord to see if, the, if it's acceptable to him to remove the contents of the shop and take the car and sell them. Okay, All right, John. Thank you very much. The bloke appears to be a straightforward and honest person, if you like. If the landlord says we've got to shut the shop today and take it all away, I don't have a problem with that. Nah, but Paul, I, nah, you're doing something real, real, real seasoned veteran-like. You putting all the pressure on the owner of the shop. Hey, listen, this is what we got. To, we can do. You want to do that? You tell me, cause it's up. It's on you. He remember he eighty. Let me know. That's tough. What's up, breezy? I suppose the only concession we would make is we'd probably give him a lift home. The office calls back. And Paul hears a very different side to the story. Right, I spoke to the uh, landlord. Yep. Um, he's claiming that the guy's uh, pulling the wool over his eyes. He says that in 2014, the uh, defendant, Mr. Cantor, yep. um, sold, sold his flat uh, for £715,000. Yeah. And he knows that there are funds available. The obvious piece of kit that we would take today is the car. OK. Ask me to see if I can get it. <laughs> Hey, buddy in there, like, listen, you can take all this. I got 800,000 bands at the crib. Do what you please. Take this off of my hands. Bankrupt me. I'm sailing off into the sunset with, with all my money. Get that to for you. Yeah, thank you very much. That's salutable. That's also veteran-like. Bye. Bro said, I'm going to go get a boat. Put it on the River Thames. And get all the young females to come on there and twerk. That's what he said, not me. It seems the agents are caught in the middle of an it's ongoing crazy. dispute. But will Paul and Steve be able to recover the... Th when I say uh, young, I mean 20s. £30,000 they came for. Paul Bowhill and Steve Penner were in North London to collect £30,000 worth of commercial rent arrears owed by a tailor. Yeah, like you got money already. Why are you, st you're 80, you're disabled. Why are you still here? You must have real love for the people that you got, the rest of the clientele you got, because ain't no way I have 800000 and I'll be in here doing this, no sir. There's some rent outstanding for here. The debtor, Mr. Cantor, claimed he wasn't concerned that his livelihood was at risk. The landlord could be pursuing you to bankruptcy. He wouldn't bother me. He said he couldn't pay. 30 odd thousand pounds. Yeah, we But after a phone call to the office, Paul heard a very different version of events. Yes, there's millionaires that work, but not tailors. I ain't doing this. The uh, defendant, Mr. Cantor, sold his flat for £715,000. Now Paul goes to tell Mr. Cantor just what his landlord has said. Right, I'll give it to you exactly as the office has given it to me. The landlord thinks you're lying because you sold your house two, three years ago for three quarters of a million pounds 
and you're obviously sitting on a gold mine, you can afford to pay, and they want us to continue to take your car away, take everything away. Uh, now, really. I can't believe it. I'm disabled. Yeah. Have you got a disabled badge? Yeah, it's in the car. Sorry. Boy, I know all the loopholes. You can't take you. That's right. You can't take a disabled person car away. You can't. Okay. Because you've got a disabled badge. You won't take the car. With Mr. Cantor's car out of bounds, Paul presses once more for payment. Is there any figure today that you could possibly raise that might... Ooh, well, certainly the working capital raise would be about five grand or something like that. If you were to pay five grand, I could give that to the office pretty much you, as a sensible... I'll tell you what, I can do this. OK. It just takes away any capital, any bills that we're going to pay, which I can ha actually delay for a while. You've talked yourself into that. That's come from you, and I think it's a sensible suggestion. Would you be able to go to the bank if we run you to the bank or some variation of that to actually draw out the money? Today, yeah. Today, no. Why not? Yeah. All right, we're not busy, but people are coming in there, and I can't, I can't post it, and I'm not prepared to. Well, ring him back and just tell him to instruct the auctioneers then. If I'm confronted with someone who's obviously been in the business for a long time, somebody who might still be up. Well, they've been there for an hour and a half. Nobody has walked in one time. Now he's just taking the PISS. Older than me, uh, it always is likely to become a, a personal fencing situation. But it's my experience that I always win. Paul's tough stance makes Mr Cantor think again. Maybe the alternative... <laughs> is if I give you a debit card, can, can that work? Yeah, that works, yeah. Let me just talk to the office first, because we still haven't got the OK for this money. Steve rings the office again to see... I think 5,000 gonna be enough. 5,000 seems small. ...whether the landlord will accept Mr Cantor's offer of £5,000 together with a payment plan for the balance. £5,000 is unacceptable, Mr Stepping Right Direction. Forward over some photographs of the items we're looking at. Uh, yeah. Copy of the inventory, um, and then I'll speak to the claims with the uh, landlord in this case and uh, see which way they want to go. Without... Okay. Well, give me five minutes and I'll come back. Yeah, we knew that. Five thousand on a fifty thousand dollar. I mean, a thirty thousand dollar debt. That ain't enough. They be needing at least half. Yeah. You got to feel sorry for the fella inside. He's eighty years old. He's struggling with this. Um, in all fairness, he'd like to walk away, but it's in his name. That's down to the landlord's choice to what he wants to do. I don't think I'd be wanting to struggle when I'm 80 at that age. It's not good news for Mr Cantor. See what I'm saying? If I was a young millionaire, even if I was in my 50s, 60s, I might still work at the business that got me to being a millionaire. But, like... Nah, bro. Nah. Nah. Nothing else, though. I ain't gonna be being a janitor or nothing like that with a million dollars. I couldn't go for it. I would work on my own dreams and aspirations at that point. He said the th the five thousand is not going to be accepted by the landlord. It won't. Okay. As Mr. Cantor won't increase his offer, Steve starts to take photos of the assets in the shop to send to the claimant. It'll be up to them to decide whether they want to clear the business out to get their money back or change their mind and accept Mr. Cantor's £5,000 offer. What, and it ain't 30000 worth of stuff. So you're not in it, Jerry. It is sad when you see people who have worked hard all their life and then gradually they're fading out with work, with one thing or another, and then they're actually falling on hard times. Minutes later, the office calls back with the landlord's decision. Um, yes, the landlord will go with five grand today. Yeah. Um, and then it will be uh, grand a month moving forward. Yeah, man, that would have been bleak. <laughs> you would have went out with that equipment and got $10 at a yard sale 
Explain, Steve. Go on. <laughs> if you pay the 5000 and then 1000 a yeah. month... Well, I've agreed to that. Yeah. And I will now pass you over to Mr Cantor, Jerry, and he'll run through the card with you. That's Jane. With £5,000 today and £1,000 monthly payments, Mr Cantor's debt should be cleared in two years. Hi, Jane. Hi, Steve. I've gone through. See you then. Take care. Look after right, yourself. Thank you very much for your help, Steve. The case is resolved. No negativity this episode, huh? Solved for now. But if Mr. Cantor defaults on his monthly payments, the agents... Minimal negativity is crazy. ...will be back. We knew if we pushed him a little bit more, we would get a better result. I can't believe everybody was calm and understanding. Look at the hell. So we had to go through part of the ritual dance. And eventually, he did what we really wanted him to do. He volunteered the payment of £5,000. He got 80 racks. $800,000. Okay. Told you. Don't matter. It got to be written exactly how it is on my ID. On the court of law, it won't stand up. I told y'all. I knew that though. Ah, well, you got three more. All right. See you. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post, and go.